Hey, this is Daniel Grove, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use this website to generate random spaceships, how to bring those into Blender, separate them into parts, and use them to kitbash your very own spaceships. You're going to learn a lot of really cool techniques for asset management, rotating objects that are at the wrong angle, and a lot of other cool stuff. So let's get started. So the website is ship.shipwright.com, and it's a pretty interesting idea. So how it works is you type in a piece of text on the top and hit build it. It will then create a random ship, mostly symmetrical. I have seen a few asymmetrical elements, but for the most part, they're symmetrical. And sometimes it puts things at weird angles, uh, which we can fix in Blender later. But I believe these parts are all custom hand modeled by whoever made this website, and they did a pretty good job. They're not high poly, but they are interesting and well-made shapes that can be used for a good starting point or inspiration for an actual detailed high poly build later. So the word Grove got me this one. Now, when you type in Grove, I think it'll give you something totally different, but let's download on the very bottom, super tiny download VRML 3D model. I'm gonna click on that, go. It's gonna download a WRL file, which I had never heard of before, but I did find out how to import it into Blender. So here in Blender, I'm using 4.0.2. Uh, let's go to the preferences and turn on the WRL importer by typing in VRML into the search of preferences within the add-on section. And here it is, import export W3D X3D such VRML to format. Uh, don't know what this format is used for. We got that turned on, so go back to 3D. Now that we've enabled the import add-on, we can go to import and there it is. Uh, three th X 3D extensible 3D. Wow, extensible. That's a fancy word. Click on that and let's find one of the WRL files I downloaded. Uh, let's check this one out. I think I downloaded this one a few days ago. Yeah, this one's got some cool shapes on it. But as you can see, the rotation is all wrong. And I'm going to show you how to fix that with some interesting techniques. So select your ship. Let's cancel out our rotations as well. So Alt R, there we go. <laughs> it's still wrong, but now it looks even wronger. Uh, tab into edit mode, press A for select all, and then P for separate. And we're gonna do separate by loose parts. Now we have all these pieces over here. It looks like about maybe 15, 20 of them over here. And we can kit bash with them. We can, you know, modify them, whatever we want to do. But we do still need to fix a rotation of some of them. Now, the script of the website does reuse parts. So there's, you know, like this one right here, I can delete because there's already one right here. Um, similarly, you'll find other chunks that are just copycats of other pieces. So if we want to separate this out and kind of split our, our pieces apart, we can just grab things and move them like this. And don't worry, we will fix a rotation to all of them in just a little bit. Got some guns, some turrets. There are some small pieces here that possibly should have been joined together. Um, we'll see. I don't know. Once we fix the rotation, it'll be easier to combine them back together. And then on another axis, let's just move them all up flat. So they're all kind of on the same plane. Uh, as you can, as you may have just noticed, the origin points are all over the place now. So we can fix the origin points by pressing by pressing A and then W and choose uh, set origin to geometry. Origin to geometry will basically calculate the volume of each chunk of each, of each object and put the origin right in the middle. Now they are nice and where they need to be. Uh, so cool. Now let's talk about fixing the rotation to these. We're gonna use snapping and proportional editing to snap a face that should be flat onto a face that definitely is flat on an external object. So let's shift A and make a cube, make it really, really big. And we can just move it over here this cube is going to be used to flatten out or correct the rotations, rather, of each of these objects. We do need to turn on a few options here, such as our snap, make sure that faces is selected, align rotation to target, and rotate is selected right there. And then last, go to your proportional editing and go into the settings and put it as constant. Also select a very large radius, which will encompass the entire ship. But because a constant is turned on, even though we'll be grabbing one face and moving it onto the cube, it's gonna snap onto that cube, but it's gonna move the whole ship along with it at a constant rate instead of bending it and warping it, which what would happen if we use these. So keep constant selected, really large radius. And let's see what happens if we tab into edit mode and grab a flat face and try to move it onto this cube. Look at that, boom. It is now realigned. We can align it to any of these axes if whatever we want. Um, there we go. And then let's grab another one. Let's say from this angle, I th believe that should be flat on the side of the ship. Yep. Awesome. And one more just to be safe. There we go. I think we just did X, Y, and Z of the ship. Now let's hide our cube and let's inspect this shape here. All right. So I'm going to solo it with a forward slash. This is a front view with number one, side view with number three, top view with number seven. Yes. Look at that. Everything's flat. And I just moved it with three different faces. 
and it fixed the rotation. We will have to actually fix the origin again because look, our origin is way down here. So let's bring our cue back and let's fix the rest of these shapes, all right? Uh, if you want to move something, um, you need to turn off a few. You need to turn off your proportional editing and maybe just turn off your snap too. So you can just move without anything happening. Turn them back on. Shift tab is snap and then O is proportional editing, by the way. Tab in edit mode. Let's grab a flat face. This one, I think this should be flat. Uh, is it? Yeah. Okay. And then another one. Let's do this face. Turn our snap back on. G, move it over here. Yep. I think that did it. Let's see from a side angle. Yep. That ship, that chunk is all correctly rotated. Move it over here out of the way. And yeah, just kind of go through each of these and doing the same thing over and over. Okay, I've got these nice parts here. Let's fix those origins again. So just select them all. Um, also, you may, you notice I deleted the um, ones I didn't care about. They were just tiny things that probably were little artifacts. So to fix these, W set origin to geometry. And um, yeah, all of our rotations are zero. If you want to you know, make them all kind of flat, you can manually do them like that. Face them all in the right direction and then select them and then press control A and apply rotation. So now, even though I rotated these 90 just a second ago, um, when I apply that rotation, now they're all zero. So cool. Now we can, you know, start kit bashing our own ship. Um, if we do these, maybe two or three more of those random ships from the website, we can get a whole lot of really interesting pieces. And you can tell, you know, that, like I said, these are not high definition, but from far away and with some nice texturing and emissions and lighting, uh, these will look great. Like you can do a lot. I mean, honestly, this could be a cool gun. <laughs> this could be a part of a robot's arm. Like there's a lot of flexibility with these parts because they're not so dialed into what they have to be. Now this one looks a little bit more spaceshipy, um, but yeah, I think it, with a little creativity, you can do a lot of cool stuff with this. If you know how to use geometry nodes, you can do a lot of really cool random scattering stuff. So let's hide this cube again and let's start, let's build a little spaceship real quick. Um, for my front piece of the ship, I'm going to use this part right here. So with it selected, Alt-G puts it right in the middle of the grid. I'm going to make these some kind of wing contraption. I'm going to rotate them like that. Um, front view, maybe do some arrays. We can scale stuff. Let's go to the modifiers tab, add and generate a mirror and select this central uh, object as basically our, our center. And now we can mirror things around it real quickly. Awesome. If we want to rotate this too, like at maybe a 45, you know, we can do that. Um, but I'm going to keep things flat. Maybe size this up a little bit. Cool. Um, this right here can be part of the ship as well. Let's move it back. And oh, we got a gap here. Let's move this. Let's mirror this as well. So modifier mirror. And only mirror it on the Z. So we have a top and a bottom. Nice. Make sure there's no holes or anything. Oh, that was cool. And we got this little shuttle looking thing, which could be an engine, honestly. If we use a few of these in the back. Let's set it to the center with Alt G, G, Y. Let's put one of these on the end of each of these four things you already have going. So generate mirror. Central is the cockpit piece we chose. And we're going to do X and Z. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Okay. So for placement, let's rotate it 90. Size it up and put it right there and move it in. Look out for any Z fighting faces here. Cool. That looks like a pretty good mesh right there combined. Let's make sure these floating engine pieces are attached so we can do that and because this thing is not that has no cylinders on it we can shrink stuff down pretty easily and it doesn't look distorted and weird make sure this thing's still good awesome there we go that's pretty great this front thing could definitely use some more uh shapes and you know details to it so i'm going to make this into like a, a double cockpit to do that though i do want to get rid of this triangulation not sure why there's so much triangulation on here. Maybe it's because of how he modeled it or maybe just his technique. 
Maybe because of my lazy modeling techniques, I don't do triangulation enough. I don't know. So uh, when I'm doing this, multi-selecting these faces I don't like, pressing the delete key and then dissolve edges. So it keeps the face there, but it dissolves it a little bit. And now if I select these faces and press control plus, it expands the selection. I'm gonna press I and then I again, just like that. And then I'm gonna do extrude along normals and I'm gonna actually go inwards. Yeah, not, not outwards, but in to give it a, like a protected glass looking thing there. Let's do one in here as well. Cool. And maybe these side triangles. There we go. Gonna inset a little bit and extrude inward cool so later if we do materials we could totally add like a black you know glass texture to those things right there ultimately this mesh is going to be um mirrored on left and right so i'm going to do that so i only have to mirror on one side and it automatically do it on the other so to do that we're going to use a built-in um uh, add-on inside a blender called auto mirror it's really handy we do need to make sure rotations are zeros which they are and we need to know which axis it's going to mirror on which is x so x click it and yeah, auto mirror did it. There we go. It already slices in half for us and it makes the modifier. So this is the only, this is really the mesh that we're, we're we working with, but it mirrors it over. So now I can save myself a lot of time by only getting rid of half of the uh, triangulated lines that I don't like because I'm used to modeling with quads and these triangle things are messing me all up. <laughs> go with all these triangulated lines gone. I will much more easily be able to do some cool, um, some cool editing to these things. There we go. So delete. There we go. Now, before you start editing, make sure you turn off that proportional editing that we did earlier because I totally forgot about that and it messed up my model for a second. So with some basic hard surface modeling techniques, which you can find in other videos of mine, I'm not going to focus on them in this video, uh, you can really bring to life a lot of these very simple shapes that are low poly, bring them into the high poly world, um, some medium to small level details, some accessories such as sensor dishes and weapons, and of course some good sci-fi materials will bring these to life and make them look amazing. I'm, I plan on making a part two to this video where I'm going to show you how to make some really beautiful and multi-use sci-fi textures, which are great for using on spaceship hulls mega structures, as well as small props and objects. Now, if you plan to make these into Blender assets to be found and used from the asset browser, uh, what you want to do is grab your shapes that you want to have as assets. Uh, let's deselect that light. There we go. We only, I only have four different objects here. Pretty cool. I'm going to right click them and go to mark as asset. Now you do need to save this Blender file in the folder you need it to be in. So if you have some kind of organizational structure for say kit bashes or spaceship parts, save this Blender file in that folder or subfolder where it needs to be. And then we're going to do the next step, which is organizing it. So I'm going to go to current file and unassigned, which is all these things right here these meshes. And also this does retain modifiers, by the way. So we can see the mirror modifier is visible. Let me size this up. There we go. That's a cool new feature in Blender 4. I think it's this size uh, slider there. And we have a noise machine, which is a node group I didn't even use. I'm not sure why that got marked as an asset, but it is. And the light, which doesn't need to be an asset. Um, so let's go with this light and clear asset. And then I think we go to blend file we can find materials, no, node groups, where is it? There it is. And yeah, noise machine is an asset in my larger library, but in this file, I don't want it to be an asset. So I'm gonna clear asset. There we go. Now we just got our four meshes and we will want to make, you know, an organizational structure. So let's say, uh, give it a name, ship parts, and then all the unassigned things, put them in there. There we go. Now they're in there to be found and used later in this file, which again is in a specific folder. You need it to be positioned in the right place. Right here I have, uh, these are actually folders, texture folder, geonodes folder, kit bash folder, and there's a bunch of blend files and subfolder blend files inside these folders. So it's very organized and easy to find stuff when I want it. But uh, this is just a quick and dirty. I do have two or three other more in-depth tutorials on the asset browser if you wanna learn that. And definitely stay tuned for part two where I show you how to make some really kick butt textures for spaceships. Thanks for watching. Any questions or if I screwed something up, let me know in the comments down below and I will help you out. Have a great one.